Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. And this is the place where you're probably, <clears throat> I think, as Linda mentioned, working, the, the, the GCMs working really closely with the VNAs is going to be crucial, and also working closely with the ASAPs and with the, the Councils on Aging to see if, in situations like this, if you don't have a child that can take care of this, whether there is some limited number of home care hours, right? Whether or not that person would qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver, exactly. even through Elder Service, even through ECOP, through, through, through the basic Elder or, or Department of Elder Services. Uh, or elder affairs programs to take care of this person. Right. I, that's the real challenge. But I think De De Deb's point is well taken, or excuse me, Linda's point is well taken that a lot of what this is going to be about is really going to be this kind of, th this working between the GCMs and the, and the VNAs and all of these players, right? Because you're not in opposition, right? Even if the VNA is denying and the client is appealing, you're not in opposition mm -hmm. because you're not suing the VNA. You're simply saying you're just we, trying we, you know, to get we're, benefits we're trying to make sure the benefits client. are there. And, and by the <laughs> way, that's one of the things that we're trying to think out with clients is whether um, <clears throat> the VNAs and the nursing homes really need to be advising clients. Mm -hmm. we, you know, saying we think this case is really close. We're denying, but you may want to appeal, mm -hmm. right? Just so that people have this be, because they, we want to have these these possibilities. Mm -hmm. Any other questions regarding this case? follow this on the surface, um, and I think one of the things to note, too, is the reimbursement structure has not changed mm -hmm. with this lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So we have these changes in the policy, mm -hmm. but how do they fit with the current reimbursement structure? Well, I, I think that's still to be decided, to be honest with you, and I think just like anything else, you're going to be looking at more hours of documentation mm -hmm. in, in the long run, which is going to actually affect the VNA affect the home health care, and, and uh, affect the clients in some cases. So you're, those are things that will probably be come down the road. But the reimbursement is still big for the nur nursing home or the home health care. The nursing homes, on the other hand, that's a whole nother ball game because they looking at maybe taking a huge loss if they get five or six audits and they don't have the documentation for any. But, 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 Matt, but CMS in their regulatory changes has made it clear that as far as they're concerned, this is revenue neutral. Mm -hmm. So they are not expecting that they're going to be paying, for example, more to the V&A to provide the, the additional documentation that they're now saying they want. Mm -hmm. Because their argument is, that, well, that documentation was expected all along. And that's right. Medicare. That's going to be a challenge. Right. Yeah, La last example, in two minutes. I want okay. to keep making sure that people are here we'll on time. We'll try to run this gentleman. Pardon? Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. This gentleman, um, Parkinson's disease, has some chronic arthritis, a uh, high blood pressure. He got a urinary tract infection. He lives with his wife at home. He started having a change in mental status. Wife was concerned, called the doctor. Doctor said, why don't you bring him to the emergency room? He's admitted because the urinary tract infection was more a urosepsis, it had gone beyond. This gentleman would make the qualifying stay because he'd be on IV antibiotics. They would also note that someone with Parkinson's disease along coupled with arthritis, the immobility gets affected very quickly. So the fact that he would be in bed and not feeling well, not remembering uh, what was going on, he was kind of delusional due to the urinary tract infection. So in pre-GMO, he would probably be covered in long-term care for, I, I'd say he may get here two weeks. Um, they put him on PT, get him back moving again, put him on a program, and probably drop him down to what used to be called a restorative which would be okay because you're trying to maintain. But what's not okay is restorative was not covered under pre-GMO. So now you go post-GMO and this gentleman would probably have the same course in the hospital, would be allowed to go home, but would have services longer because he may now need some um, more help with therapy, more, not the urinary tract infection being a problem, but you can pick that up. The visiting nurse is going to be watching to make sure he's hydrated, his nutritional status is good, 
his mental status remains clear. But as far as PT going in, they want to make sure that he gets back to where he was, where he was able to mobile around the house independently. He did have a walker, but he also used a cane. So they're going to try to get him back on that standard. And they are going to train maybe the family to be, do some of these exercises, and they'll be in to make sure that he's not relapsing or going back. Because it doesn't have to be a urinary tract infection that's going to cause the relapse. It could be that the mental status has changed, and along with the fact that he's not re getting back to where he was, which we often see after an illness w with the elderly. So I'll open it up for your questions. Any questions on this example? Uh, if not, just to close, th these are, these, and I know Anne has, Anne has a, a few words, Anne. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I just wanted to quickly remind you that for seeing that we just need to have these questionnaires filled out so you could make sure that you fill these out before you leave, and we'll be able to hand you a CEU certificate. Um, but I also <coughs> wanted to take the opportunity to introduce the sponsors of this event. A wonderful idea. Thanks. Um, Christina Della Croce, who is the Vice President for Business Development at CarMetro. I have Alicia and Lynn from Wingate and Sudbury, who co-sponsored, and Katie here from Orchard Hill. And Katie's going to be doing tours after the presentation today, if anyone would like to see an apartment, this, this beautiful facility. And thank you, Arthur, very much. No, and thank you, for, and thank you all of us for, in, for, for inviting us. And, and Katie, thanks for making those eggs. They were great this morning. That was really, <laughs> that was really terrific. Uh, once again, the moral of the story is there's good news and bad news here, but you kind of need to be knowing about this stuff. And I think that it is going to cause these kind of changes in the future. I think we're going to be seeing changes in terms of the role of the geriatric care manager. I think you're going to be seeing expanded home health agency um, uh, cases. But this issue of documentation is really going to be a rub. If you want to be following any of this stuff, the things that I'm doing, um, I, the, you, have, you have the information regarding the YouTube. I have a YouTube channel, and we upload, we'll be uploading this presentation. And we, as, just as we uploaded the, the Center for Medicare Advocacy presentation, we'll be uploading others regarding this issue if you want to be following any of this. Uh, thank you very much for coming and uh, hope to meet you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.